It's pizza time, dough edition. I'm back here with the starter. We got activities looking really good. We're on to the next stage of the process and that's the mix, the crucial part. Pretty fired up on this, it's looking good to me. So timing on this, like I said earlier, really depends on your environment, your starter, so your results may vary. And the first time you're doing it, you know, just keep an eye on it so you can see how your stuff works. This looks like almost tripled to me. I saw it double around six hours or so. I, I would be comfortable with doing the mix right then. I like it like that. But I was busy doing what? Making pizza. I'm not lying. It's a lifestyle. So it had to wait. I'm not tripping on that though. Like a lot of things I do in pizza and in probably in life is like there's some wiggle room in there on these timings and things like that. And also in that process, that's how you learn stuff too. You let it go a little longer, you're like, damn, that thing, like, I really perked up there at that last little element. You learn stuff as it goes. So, you know, don't take everything, like, you know, just play around with it. That's what you do, should be doing. That's how you're learning. Make it your own. This is looking good to me. All right, on to the next part, the flour mix. I feel like that's a real big area that you guys can play around making your own mixes and tailoring that batch to how you like. For this one, I have 300 grams of bread flour in here. A lot of the pizzas I make, they use a lot of bread flour in the mix. When I was baking exclusively on the baking seal, that was just my go-to for years before I got the new oven. I used, the bread was, uh, excuse me, bread flour was the main thing in the mix. I really like it in there. So I'm using that, I like that little bit of chew. I'm not gonna really define my style. I mean, if anything, I guess you could call it artisan, for lack of a better term. I, but I kinda like that one because I think that means, like I said before, some other people out there in the pizza world have said, of like, you know, it's paying attention to every step of the process from all everything that's going into your mix here for your pizza and what you're putting on it, it's paying attention to all of it. And that's what we're doing here. With the flour, I have that bread flour. I'm using, I always use organic flour. Today I got bread flour from Central Million. That's probably my favorite. I feel like it's the protein content, everything about it works really well for a lot of stuff, including pizza. So that's what I got going here. This is a malted one. I like that malt in the mix as well because I feel like when you're using naturally leaven, a sourdough mix that helps along the way, just the product comes out really nice. I'm into it. Along with that, I got some double zero. This is what you could would call double zero normal. That would be if you're using Caputo, the pizzeria flour, that blue bag. I feel like that's great, you know, when you're using, we're using the uni outside high heat or on the high-ish heat, that flour performs well in there. If I'm inside in the baking steel, I'm less into that pizzeria flour. You can still use that double zero, like the bread, the chef's bag, they call it, you know, in the mix, or just even go all bread on that. But I have 250 grams of the double zero in the mix. And then along with that, another place where I feel like you can really introduce some big flavors into your dough, make it your own, is I have 90 grams, grams of what I would say like a whole grain blend. What I got going is I have 70 grams of T85, if you've been following me for a little bit, you've probably heard me bring that flour up. It's one of my favorites. It's again, it's from Central Million. It's an organic flour. That's, you know, somewhere between a whole wheat and like more of your bread flour. The 85, that's that ash content in there. So a true whole wheat flour, you know, that's up one point something percent. This is at 0 0.85. So you still are getting that flavor in there but there's not a whole lot, you can just look at the flour and you're not seeing a bunch of grain in there. While that stuff is jam packed with flavor, it does good things for your starter and things like that. When you put too much of it in there, you can cause the dough to rip, break down your gluten. So you just, you know, be careful on that. Along with that, I got 20 grams of rye flour. That's one of my personal favorites to mix into pizza. That's like, I think Moza was the first place I saw that and I really like it. I, I just like the flavor that brings. Feel free to play around with that mix. You don't like rye, do something else. You know, I'll put buckwheat in there. I change it up all the time. It's a lot of fun, but like I said, you know, you can play around, push that to the limit. You will learn then to see if your dough, like, hey, man, it's not stretching so good anymore. Maybe you've kind of hit that limit of how much whole grain you want. Why do I like that in there though? Is it brings a ton of flavor. 
I don't really like to define my pizza as one specific style. If you're saying, hey, I'm only doing Neapolitan, a lot of people are like, hey, it's all, it has to be double zero all the way. And that's great flour. It produces that super tender, with just a little bit, not a crunch, but like a crisp exterior. It's bomb, really good. But you know, it sometimes could leave like a little bit more flavor, something like that. I like, that's why I like putting the whole grains. I can jam pack that in there and you don't really need a whole bunch. And it really livens things up. I'm into it, make it your own, go for it. All right, let's get this thing going. I'm gonna just put this aside, how I started off. I have my water here. This is just 350 grams of room temperature water. It's just what came out of my little filter spot. Like I mentioned before, I'm using filtered water here. I wouldn't stress too hard on the water. Like, you know, a lot of pizzerias are just pulling that straight out of the tap, no filter. Other places are filtering it, but don't fall for any shenanigans of flying in water or buying bottled water. That stuff is swag anyway. So just, you know, some good filtered water. You're all good. Temperature wise on this, I'm using room temp. It's about, you know, high 60s in here. I'm okay with that. If it was really warm, I might hit that with some ice, cool it down, bring that fermentation. We just want a slow rise. We don't want to go too fast, develop those flavors. And also in the wintertime, if it's cold, I'll heat it up. Not too much, maybe like 85 degrees. All right, let's get this thing going. So I'm just going to pop the lid on this. Take that rubber band off. I don't know if you can see here, but like it looks super alive, really bubbly, really good. I'm into it. I'm going to get this mixed up in here. I feel like at this part, the best way to go is just go straight in with your hand. That way you can scrape down everything inside of there and I'm just gonna get this right into the water get my fingers in there get all every last piece because that's like that's where the bomb stuff we're doing naturally leavened here the sourdough so get all those live little cultures in there making sure we have a good rise on this one another thing I want to say on that too you know people ask a sourdough does it really have a strong sour flavor I, I'm not really looking for that when I'm making sourdough pizza. That's why it's probably even better, call it naturally leaven, because that flavor we're looking for, you know, lactic kind of fermentation flavor stuff going on. It shouldn't be too funky sour. At least personally, that's how I like, you know, not something like you hear that, like when people think sourdough, I think they're thinking that like classic San Francisco style. It's like got kind of a bite or something you could say to it. That's not really what we're looking for in pizza here. But I'm getting this mixed up, so I'm just going in. I just go with my hands and just kind of pinching in through there. I'm not stressing too hard. You don't have to get this fully mixed in here. But you know, this is looking good. It looks delicious. Mm, it smells really good. That starter, like I said, should have some aroma to it, that lactic fermentation smell, but it shouldn't smell bootsy. Nothing, no crazy odors. My hands, you know, this is a messy process. I like to do it by hand. I think when you're just making this is a four dough ball batch. I'm not tripping, not getting out the mixer. I feel like it makes a really good product. Some places, even pizzerias do their whole thing by hand, which is pretty crazy. You're putting out a lot of dough balls. But we're getting this mixed up how I do it. I did like another video where I was showing the whole process from starter all the way through the pizza. I do it backwards compared to some people. I have my flour mix, so I have all those flours, the bread flour, the double zero, the T85, the rye already blended up here and I'm just going to add the water to it just pour it in and I just want to make sure I scrape out every last bit of our starter water mix in there just dump this one in the sink and at this point you can either go in you know with the spoon kind of just starting to get that flour mixed in there and what I'm looking for here I'm not going to need it at this point I'm just letting the flour absorb that water in the starter. And I'm gonna get this all mixed up. You wanna look for it. No real dry looking flour, but like I said, don't really need it. It might like a, look a little crazy, like damn, this looks dry. Don't trip on it too hard. You'll be all good. But just get it so there's no like just flour floating around the bowl. And I'm gonna let it sit for 25 minutes. Just let it do its thing, kind of absorb some stuff before I add the salt or anything else in the mix. I'm gonna get this thing mixed up. You know, see at this point, I like to go back and through that same method I was showing you where you kind of pinch through like that. That's really good and folding it. You're not really needing it, but you're getting, you know, just so everything gets mixed in there. We get it all absorbed up. 
I'm gonna get it mixed up, gonna cover it up, let it hang out 25 minutes. We'll be back on to the next step. Get this mix going, one love. We're back with the dough mix. This is looking really good. It's been 25 minutes. Like I said, some of these times, I wouldn't stress too hard on it. Let it have some time though. You wanna let that flour, water, starter, everything get happy, start absorbing stuff. I like to do that before I add in the salt. And I got this salt this time. I'm using 20 grams here. I feel like that's maybe a little on the higher end for some people. That's just personally how I like it. I like a little saltier dough. That's all of my thing when I go out and eat some bomb pizza. It's like, oh man, I could use just maybe a little bit more salt. That's just personally what I like. So I got it kicked up pretty high. Feel free to dial that back if you want. I got that mixed in here too with just a little tiny bit of barley malt too. I like that in the mix. I feel it helps the fermentation a little. You know, that's adding just like a little bit of sugar into the mix. Some people are completely anti that. I understand. But, you know, try it out if you're like, Completely leave it out. It's a little tiny bit. It might not even be a gram. I just pull a little bit out, mix it in with, I got 30 grams of water in here. I like to get that because I want it mixed in a little bit more. When you just dump the salt on there, that barley malt, it's just kind of, you know, just make sure everything gets mixed in really well. It causes a little bit of issues sometimes in the, when you're getting it mixed up, but just be patient. We're gonna start folding and kneading this and it'll all come together. I'm looking for, you know, on this mix here, I shoot for maybe five, 10 minutes. It depends on how fast you need and what your dough is looking like that day. I, I start with just mixing it up a little bit here after the rest. It feels really nice, you know, getting your hands in the dough. That's how you really learn about it. That's why I prefer doing this by hand instead of with the mixture. Get your hands on it. You start learning something about it, feeling how it feels. If you dial that hydration up, what does that dough feel like? You're like, oh, tripping, man. This is going to be hard to work with. You know, it might be causing some issues. Or, you know, it's like, man, that's looking going to have those perfect airy bubbles. You're into it. So I'm just going through here, folding it, kneading it. I don't dump all this in at once because it can create kind of a mess. You're like, it, the flour, the mix here has just some trouble absorbing all. So I just add it in little parts, just fold it in as I go, shooting for, you know, around there, five, 10 minutes it should take you, making sure nothing weird is stuck on here, just adding the water and the salt mix as I go. That salt, I kind of got it to absorb in there, but it's not all gonna get fully mixed in. I'm not tripping on that though. It's gonna hang out, we're gonna let this thing, I always shoot, you know, my fermentations are a little bit longer. I'm not gonna use this tonight, so everything will get happy for a little bit. I'm gonna get this thing mixed up. I'm just working in here, looking for it to be smooth. I'm gonna finish it up, cover it up, let this thing chill out in the dough, Nick. 25 minutes, let's say. You could probably do 15 minutes. You can go longer than 25 minutes, but we're shooting for that 25. Come back, finish it up with the oil, then we're head into that bulk fermentation. Looking pretty good so far. Pizza time is coming. We're back and this dough is smelling so good. I just uncovered it. When you're letting it rest, you wanna make sure you keep your dough covered. You know, use some, a plate, plastic wrap, whatever you got off hand. But I just uncovered it, it's smelling so good. We're on the final stage of the mix. That's where I'm gonna add some oil into the mix. The final thing, you know, this could be optional. If you are doing a traditional Neapolitan style of pizza, they don't put oil in it. But personally, I like the Magarda's other style that I'm kind of going for. I like a little bit of oil in the mix. I feel it improves the dough overall in many ways. It prevents that gum line. That's where the toppings are hitting that dough. You can see sometimes on a pizza that might not be cooked properly that you'll get that gum line. It's, it's an unpleasant part of the pizza. It's like basically, you know, like uncooked dough right there. Not a good thing. This. The oil will help with that, help with your mouth feel a bit, the stretchability. You know, people say that will make the pizza more crispy. On the bottom, I don't know, I debated that because it also makes it more tender. Anything though, I like including some of it. Not too much, some people go huge on it, some people are like never at all. You know, let's go somewhere, let's go for it a little bit. I got 10 grams here. I usually play around with, you know, maybe five to 20 grams of oil. This is just extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna start folding it in here, just like the same way I did with the salt. Just adding a little bit as we go, getting it in, I'm getting a feel for this dough. It feels really nice. Just folding it in here, it's looking nice and shiny, smells excellent. I'm into it. Hopefully this is gonna be a good batch of dough. 
I'm gonna get this all folded up, just adding this oil, like I was saying, as I go. I'm gonna work it in. One little final note before I finish this off. I feel like this is a good opportunity to weigh your dough one last chance. You know, like I said, weigh your shiz all the time as you go along. Keep track of that stuff. But, you know, sometimes things get off, so make sure you just weigh that one last time. That'll make your life easier when you uncover this thing after we do our bulk fermentation. And that way you already know. My dough ball, say you're shooting for 300 grams and like maybe you messed up a little bit on your mix or something. Now you know it's 304 is what you're shooting for. It's just make life easier. You know, no shortcuts, but we were paying attention to every part of the process here, you know, but trying to make life easy too. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's good pizza. I'm gonna finish working this oil in here. I'm gonna let this one, it's getting kind of late here, how I did my dough setup today. So I'm gonna actually go for a short bulk ferment. I don't know, maybe we'll see. I'm gonna start checking it after a half hour. Oftentimes though, when I'm doing that bulk ferment, I'm going up to three, four hours even. That's another place you can play around with it. You know, try it one day, you go for a short one, like, you know, dividing up right away. That's how some pizzerias do it. Other people like, you know, even doing that bulk overnight. Play around with it. All right, this is about, you know, I didn't keep exactly track, maybe close to five minutes of kneading on this last part, getting that oil all incorporated. You know, looking nice and smooth. It feels really nice in the hands. It's not sticky. It feels like it's gonna handle well. I'm just gonna put it back into the bowl. Get it covered up, like I said. You can weigh it again right here to get your weights exactly what you're gonna divide this dough balls up into, make your life easy. But this is looking good to me. Gonna get it covered. Gonna let it sit for its bulk fermentation. We'll be back to divide this dough up into four. Then it's on its way. Pizza time's almost here. It's dough time. One love.